Hello, welcome to another class in CIT 322 Internet Programming. Today we will be looking at how we can connect to the internet using different methods. So welcome back to class. So we are looking at internet programming and types of internet connection. So first, let's look at an outline for what we'll be discussing. I will first review some basic definitions. After, we'll quickly look at the different types of connection uh, that can we can have so as to connect to the internet, like the dial-up, ISDN, cable TV, DSL, satellite, cellular, and fiber. We'll look at all these. So, but before that, let's look at some basic concepts. First, let's talk about the internet. Now, the concept of computers being connected together was first proposed in the US by ARPANET, that is the Advanced Research Project Agency Network. And what they were able to do is they connected universities together and they found out that they can transmit data from one point to the other. And that gave birth to the history of the internet. And more and more uh, offices, universities, places were connected together, and even countries. And so we now have an interconnection of different networks. So this makes up the concept of the internet as we have it today. I mean, this course is about internet programming that's why we're first looking at the basis for even the connection in the first place now let's move to another concept which is intranet so when you talk about intranet you are talking about connecting computers in your own little space for instance in your house or in the office you can have what you call an intranet so those computers are just connected amongst themselves so it's not connected to the world it's just connection of personal computers together so that they can share data or speak together. Then you also have extranet. Now extranet takes it a little bit further. So it's not just computers in a local area network that is in your local environment, moves out to outsiders. For instance, if uh, there are collaborators that work together, different uh, companies, so they can be connected together in what you call an extranet. It's not going global yet but you just have the network connected to authorized people. So lastly, you have uh, the internet itself, which is a global computer network, different computers, personal, organizational, connected all together, countries across the world connected together. So that gives us the concept of the internet. That's why you can sit at your desk and connect to any computer in Europe or in Asia, wherever it is, because there is an interconnection of different networks to share information and communication facilities. So now let's look at different ways we can connect to the internet. I mentioned this before. Uh, so we have the dial-up. Uh, it's important to know the progression and the history of how connectivity started and, and how it brought us to where we are today. So the first is dial-up, then you have Integrated Services Digital Network, ISDN. Okay, after that, there's the DSL, Digital Subscriber Lines, and Digital Satellite Communication. Even beside this, you also have cellular communication, cellular radio, and even um, fiber connections. So these are different ways organizations, people can connect uh, to this global interconnection of networks. So let's start with the dial-up connection. As you can see in the di diagram at the side here, dial-up is a form of internet access that uses facilities of the public switched telephone network, okay, to establish a connection to the internet. So essentially what this means is you have telephone lines connecting computers or networks together. And as many of us will remember, um, you have telephone lines connecting people at different places. 
So with these lines, usually a modem is provided to translate the analog signal to digital signal that the computer can take. So you can have a computer in Abuja, you can have a computer in Lagos, now you use the telephone lines and modems to connect the two computers together. That's essentially what dial-up means. Now, it may not be common today, but it used to be the primary means of connecting to the internet before. And it's important as uh, students of computer science to understand the history of the internet uh, the way we have it today. So dial-up connection, you dial a telephone line, connect to another telephone somewhere, and then you are able to speak and communicate together. Okay, so these are just essential properties of uh, dial-up connection. It uses uh, the public switch telephone network, as I said, uh, establish a dialed connection to an ISP. That is another important concept, internet service provider, who is responsible for managing that whole network and transmission of that data. I mentioned a modem, which is mod modulator demodulator. That's a device that modulates, essentially converts an analog signal to a digital signal so that the computer can understand it. Okay? So most ISPs support modems at the speed of 28.8 kilobits uh, per second, up to 56 K kbps. So talking about internet connection, one concept that is very important is bandwidth, the speed, the speed of the connection. And uh, as you know, we are moving to um, a situation where you need to transmit data faster, bigger data, more interesting data. So speed of connection matters a lot. Some people, for instance, complain, no, I can't download this page, I can't join this meeting. It may be the speed of their connection at that point in time that is making the big difference. So let's look at ISDN. Again, this is a slight improvement over the dial-up connection. As I mentioned, speed is primary. Okay, so ISDN is a set of communication standards that helps you to even translate bigger things, voice, video, data. Okay, not just textual or, or, or text material, but a combination of multimedia. So an ISDN now gives internet speeds ranging from 64 to 128k bps okay so isdn meant for residential use uh, is the basic rate interface bri okay and then you also have uh, the bri is called the b channel and you also have the d channel but as mentioned here what is commonly used is the isdn b channel that's the bri because it gives you better speed okay so again drawing from the concepts we had before in the dialogue so you just have the isdn network you still have telephone lines but you can transmit uh, data between the networks better okay let's move to the next one which is uh, cable tv connection okay. as you can see the dial-up and ISDN are basically using telephone lines, but the cable TV, this connection is done using more like TV cables, or cable, t uh, cable meant for TVs, as we can see here. Okay, so it, they are coaxial cable, exactly. And they help to connect to a form of modem that helps to tr transmit the distance you have over this coaxial cable uh, TV cables, okay? So you can see the speed goes higher than you have uh, from the ISDN or even the dial-up connection. So it can go up to 10 Mbps, okay? But the challenge of this is that the cable network is designed basically to move information in one direction, mainly for broadcast, not for moving information back and forth, okay? Just like when you receive cable signal at home, it's just one direction mainly. You don't talk back to the TV provider. Okay, So that's why uploads are usually poorer and depends a lot on the line quality. Okay, So that's a cable connection. Then you have the digital subscriber line, uh, which basically represents families of technologies for, again, data transmission over wires. 
okay, but wires of a local telephone network. So in DSL, you have two types, okay, of frequency spectrum for the voice analog signals. You have the symmetric DSL, which can help offer transmission, say, bandwidth, transmission from both ends, same bandwidth on both directions. That's why it's called symmetric. Then you have asymmetric DSL, which provides different band bandwidth uh, in the upstream and downstream direction. Okay, so uh, this introduces this concept of upstream, downstream. Okay, so upstream is, you know, uploading data and downstream is you are bringing down or downloading data. So usually, internet connection is two ways, uploads, downloads. Okay, so you, when they are in the same quantity, that is the rate of transmitting up is the same as that of down, it becomes symmetric. And asymmetric is when that rate is different. Okay, so the throughput for digital subscriber line, again, goes from as much as uh, 256 uh, kilobits per second to 40 megabits per second, okay, in the direction of the customer, that's the downstream. So again, the technologies that are combined together to provide DSL connection can be seen here. Now let's move on to digital satellite connection. Remember the ones we talked about basically use uh, telephone lines or TV cables. Um, then came the idea of satellites. So you have a satellite up in, this, uh, in space in the sky and then you are using uh, that to transmit signals over very, very large distances, okay? So that's what you call digital satellite system for direct broadcast and helps you to get internet information. Now, our satellite systems are very excellent, but they are expensive, you know, and um, the bandwidth they offer too is significant and it's good for many purposes, but you need a dish, you need an antenna, so that's why you see a lot of VSATs uh, in many places. Basically what they're using, they're trying to use some form of a satellite communication for the transmission of that data, uh, carrying bits, packets from one place to the other. Okay, so uh, uplink speeds are usually between 50 to 150 kpbs, uh, and then download can occur ranging from 150 K kbps to one 1,200 kbps. So satellite is another means where people can get internet. We can have internet or places connected together. So again, this is a di uh, diagram explaining it. There's a satellite in the orbit. So you have the VSAT connection in one place and then there is an antenna also at the other place. So the satellite helps to connect these two together and then they have internet connected. So all this we can find even in our cost material. So the main advantage of the satellite over modems is accessibility and they are also faster. Now let's move on to cellular networks. Now these are the ones that we are probably most familiar with today because satellite requires quite a lot getting VSAT and all that. And then you also have less and less of these long telephone lines connecting different cities together as it used to be. So mo these days, it's very likely that most uh, people will be using cellular networks. So you have our telecoms providers like, I don't know, uh, Glow, Airtel, uh, MTN, and the others. Okay, so they have these cell towers. Or, or must that helps in connecting different places together, okay? So, and that communication primarily is wireless. You don't have cables. It's just neat wireless communication. So, and in cellular network, there's a distribution over land areas called cells. And each cell is served by at least one base station or transceiver. And we will have seen something like this sometime somewhere. 
So a cellular network or cellular internet connection is sold under 3G, 4G, LTE, and even the 5G that is coming up rapidly. So this is how cellular network works. So you have base station or mast at different points. So they've done the calculation so that there will be coverage so that when a user moves from one place to the other, you don't necessarily lose connection. You are just handed over from one cell to the other. So the cellular network utilizes the base stations to provide uh, the cell with the network coverage, which can be used for transmission of voice, data, and other types of content. Okay, the cell type uses a different set of frequencies from neighboring cells to avoid interference and provide guaranteed service quality within each cell. So wherever you are, you just communicate with the cell and you can communicate to anybody in a different cell. So there is this uh, arrangement for efficiency and so that there is no loss of transmission, okay? So when joined together, these cells provide radio coverage over a wide geographical area. So the last form of connection we're discussing is the fiber connection, okay? Uh, as the name um, implies, a fiber connection uses fiber optic cables. That is like glass, okay? So, and it's actually better for transmitting data because you can have very, very high speeds. Okay, light, the speed of light, of course, is <laughs> extremely fast. So, and using gla glass or fiber cables helps you to transmit data, voice, video, data quickly and over very long distances. Okay, data is transmitted via beams of light and the transmission speed can use up to, can get up to 940 megabits per second. Now you can't find any other connection that can give uh, up to this speed. However, it's very, very expensive. It's more expensive than the other types of connections. So, and there are different types of fiber connection. You can have like what is called the fiber to the cabinet, FTTC, FTTC type of fiber. So all what that means is that you have um, a fiber connection from um, the teleco exchange to a road side cabinet. So it goes from the teleco to a cabinet that's the fiber cable, the fiber optic cable. And then it's from this cabinet that a connection is picked and delivered to an office or to the house. Okay, FTTC, fiber to the cabinet. Okay, so this type of connection is very fast. You see, but the fiber stops at the roadside cabinet. The second type of fiber connection is the fiber to the premises. So you have the fiber optic cable moving from the telephone exchange point straight to the house. So you see very, very fast connection. You don't have copper cable as an intermediary, but straight fiber connection to the, to the house. And this is where you really need very super fast, ultra fast uh, gigabit speeds. And of course, in such scenario, it can be very expensive. So those are ways in which we can have different types of connection. Um, there is this short video which you can check to watch that gives you more information about different ways we can connect to the internet. I'll leave you to go through this, um, but I'll just move on to uh, the next slide, which is basically to let us ponder on this activity. Can you discuss the history of the internet? Can you discuss the major ways of connecting to the internet? And then this term FTTC and FTTP. Thank you for listening.